All right, let's take a look at an example of a static equilibrium problem. So let's assume I've got a system that looks something like this. I've got a bar, and I'm interested in the forces acting on this bar, okay, or this beam, whatever you want to call that. So I want to look at the forces acting on it. I've got a couple of different things. First, I've got a roller here. It's a very common symbology for the roller. You've got some sort of a shape with wheels on it, and that means it's a roller. Now remember that rollers can only exert forces normal to the surface. Now in this particular case, it's actually up against a, a, like a ceiling of some type. And so the roller's gonna have some force, and it's gonna be, I'm gonna label it R, so that's the force due to um, the roller acting on the beam, okay? Or if we consider the roller as part of the, um, part of the beam, then it would be a normal force due to the ceiling acting on the beam. But the main thing is, is that I'm going to label it R and it's down. So it's in the Y direction. So as I do the sum of the forces in the Y, I'm going to go ahead and put a minus R in here. And then over here, I've got a pin acting on the beam, right? So this pin cannot exert a moment, neither can the roller. The pin cannot exert a moment. And so it's, it's going to only exert forces in the X and the Y. So it's a pin. So I'm going to call this piece of X and I'm going to call this piece of Y. And I've separated out into its X and Y component. Technically, I would say that this is a normal force due to the pin acting on the beam, right? Or the member, whatever we decide to call it. So it is a normal force. The pins exert normal forces because it's perpendicular to the surface, but they're round. So perpendicular surface is easy because it can be anywhere on that round, on that round direction, right? So I just break it down into PX and PY. I put it in the positive direction because I don't know what direction it is. Could be negative on one of them and not the other. Could be negative on both of them. At this point, I don't really know. So I just put them as positive. And in the end, the mathematics will tell me if I'm wrong. If, if I end up with PX being negative, um, which actually in this case, I think I will, then, then I'll get a minus sign. When I solve for PX, I'll get a negative 10 or whatever it is. I'm not gonna do any numbers in this example, but that's the idea. So I have, a, I have a force in the x direction, that's p sub x, and I have a force in the y direction, that's up, so that's p sub y, positive, right? This force is positive, and this force is positive. And then finally, kind of a new thing that we haven't seen yet, I've got a spring. Now springs are like strings, and that they only apply forces of tension, could be compressions, uh, but it's a tension along the direction of the spring. And so there's a tension in this direction, which I'll call that T. The spring makes an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. Okay, I'm gonna assume that the spring is pulling, so it's a tension due to the spring acting on the beam. And so there's a component in the X direction, that's T cosine theta, right? T cosine theta, and that's in the positive, so I'm gonna put plus T cosine theta. And then there's a component in the y direction, and that's gonna be t sine theta, and that's down. So minus t sine theta. And that's gonna be down, right? So I can see immediately, because there are no other x forces, and I've designated this as a spring in tension, so this is clearly in the wrong direction, because then when I solve for this, I'm gonna get p over on the other side, and it's gonna be negative. All right, so I set that equal to zero. I set that equal to zero. Then the sum of the moments. So the sum of the moments, though, about what point? Well, this is the beauty of it. We get to choose. We can choose any point we want. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the moments to be around the pin. So let me designate that point as P. All right, so because that's where the pin is at. So that is the point P. So I'm going to do the sum of the moments around the point P. And the reason I choose that is because there are two unknowns right here. And so I've eliminated two unknowns from my system of, of equations, if you will, at least for this equation. All right, and then what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get R. Now R is pushing down. So if R was the only force acting on the beam, except the pin, so the beam's free to rotate about the pin, and R is the only force that's gonna rotate it in a clockwise direction. It's gonna rotate it in a clockwise direction. And so the moment there is gonna be minus R 
times whatever this length is. So we're gonna call this length L. So minus R times L. Maybe that's given, maybe it's not, it doesn't matter. That's gonna be R times L. So that's, that's gonna be clockwise. Then when I go over to T, notice what I've got here. Here's T sine theta, or excuse me, T cosine theta is right here. But if you look at the line of action for T cosine theta, it passes through the pin. There's no moment. So the line of action of T cosine theta passes through the pin. And then the line of action for T sine theta is perpendicular to their distance to the pin. So that's gonna be a nice perpendicular value. So I'm gonna get T cosine theta, and then I need this distance in here, and let's call this distance D, just so I have a, a, some sort of a symbology there. And that's gonna be times D. Well, if the, if the tension is the only thing acting on the beam, except it's free to rotate about this pin P, the tension's pulling it this way, that's gonna be a counterclockwise moment, or a counterclockwise rotation. And so that's gotta be positive. And so those are the only moments around point P acting on the beam. And so that's going to add out to zero. And I don't know what's unknown in here, but something's going to be known and there's going to be some unknowns. But you'll end up with these three equations in order to solve that system of equations, depending upon what's given or not given. All right? So that's how we set up the force and moment equations in two dimensions for this beam. Other shapes and other configurations are certainly possible, but the idea will always be the same. What are the forces in the X? Add them up, set them equal to zero. What are the forces in the Y? Set them up, add them, set them equal to zero. And then what are the moments about? Pick a point. It doesn't matter which point you pick, right? It doesn't matter which point you pick. Be careful about picking multiple points because unless something weird is going on, chances are you're not really adding another equation because there's all the sum of moments. Um, but there are exceptions to that rule, so be, but be careful with it. All right, so some of the forces, some of the moments, really good free body diagram, and you'll be all set. All these problems will work the same way. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.